Okay, I'd like to welcome you all to the Sustainability Advisory Board meeting for Monday, January, no, is that right? January 20th yes. <laughs> at 4 o'clock p.m. And we do have a little finer weather than we would have had if we had this meeting on the 4th. I think we must be 25, 30 degrees warmer today. <laughs> um, so the meeting has been called to order. Is there any public comment today? Well, you know, of course. But I, I sent you a message. I sent the, everybody on the committee a message, and I also sent a, a similar message to the uh, Common Council about a federal partnership called the um, Partnership for Sustainable Communities. And um, I didn't get any reply from, I didn't get any reply which answered my question, which basically is why isn't the city involved with that? There were uh, um, like I said in my message, about 700 cities, over 700 communities that have gotten assistance from that program. Um, over three and a half billion dollars have been uh, distributed to those communities. Um, they provide technical assistance for especially planning departments. If you go to their the section of that web page, uh, com sustainablecommunities.gov. You can, if you go to the section, uh, the tab about, you can find some reports about like reviews of what they've done in the past three years since 19, uh, since 2009 to help to help communities. There's a, a 20 page um, report that you can read there and it really, I think if you look that, if you just take a look at that, I'll think I think that you will see that it would be, I mean, it seems to me it would be, nothing could be more appropriate for this committee um, than to get involved with that or or if this, or for the city to get involved with that if it really um, is pursuing sustainability. So I didn't get any answer, but I think that the answer is obviously that the city is not involved because they couldn't find any evidence that it is, unless more recently it has been. But um, so I didn't get any response to that, and I'm wondering if I can get any response to that now. It was my understanding that Liz had gotten back to you on that, Steve. Yeah. Well, she said that I'll I'll uh, I'm reading right here. Um, I'll see. I'll, I will check it out and see what kind of feedback I receive from SAB members. Okay, I would consider that a response, and we hadn't had a meeting since then, so we'll be incorporating that in our in our agenda. But it's not on today's because it was scheduled a month and a half ago, <laughs> given the weather and everything. Yeah, I was we're not ignoring you. We just needed time to look at it, so we don't have an answer for you yet, but we will. But you know, it is it is possible for any individual. I send it to each individual on the board to have dialogue with members of the public. I'm no longer on the board, so there's no open readings, um, no open meetings violation possible anymore for t discussing it with me. If yeah. I could comment, Steve, you ended the email with shame on you and shame on us. That doesn't make me feel like I want to have a conversation. That mm -hmm. turns me off right away. So if you, you want a response, having a positive ending to me would open up the dialogue because I think it's a really good idea, but that ending just, I was just like really excited and I got to that. I was like, man, now I feel really horrible. And so I recommend in the future ending with a positive comment just because that's I, how my brain works anyhow. I said that's a big boo for you and, uh, and us. All right, all right. That includes me. Well, I understand that and I, I, I do appreciate that, but I just... I don't know. It just, I feel like I have failed myself. I was on this board for six years, and I feel like I achieved almost nothing. And so I feel I'm, I myself feel like a failure. And I, uh, I know I didn't do very well. I, I'm trying, to, but I'm still trying to be helpful. And I don't know what more I can do. I, you know, when I was on the board, I made this suggestion that the city should look into this partnership, but. Even then, it, it, you know, I didn't. It didn't go anywhere. So it's really, it's really like 
as you know, Steve. It's really, really disheartening when when I make this. I'm, when I come, I'm trying to be as helpful as possible, and I get, and it just dies right there after it leaves my lips or my fingers. As you know, Steve, um, every January we do have our. We go through the process. We we prioritize what we intend to work on for the upcoming year and make our goals and our implementation plan, which is later on today's agenda. And we have to um, we have to stick to that, or we would be going off on all kinds of tangents. As I said, we we did acknowledge that we received this, and we do plan to look into this. But that's all that I can tell you about it at this point in time. Even at the end of today's meeting, we may have more information because it may have been rolled into one of our implementation plans at that point. But right now, that's all I can tell you. Thank you for sharing your concern, though. I appreciate that. Well, thank you. Okay. Uh, prove minutes of the November meeting since the December meeting was canceled um, due to lack of quorum. Were there any, oh, well, I'd entertain a motion on the minutes. That's a move. I second. To accept as written. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Great. Thank you very much. They were excellent minutes. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> um, and today we're very lucky to have Betty Harriman here from the Bird City um, group, <laughs> which also runs Bird Fest. And she's not only a birder, but very knowledgeable. So. I think you're going to kind of give us an idea about the renewal and maybe something about BirdFest and some of the activities for the year? Or? Um, well, just, just a brief uh, sort of summary of where we are with Bird City, I think. And, and then if you have specific questions, I'll try to answer them. Um, Bird City is a notion that started about 10 or more years ago, really, because our society is getting more urbanized and it became obviously to, obvious to birders that if we wanted to protect those birds we love, we had to look at the urban parts of the state, not just you know the wildlife areas and the parks and people's rural areas. So that's really the genesis. And someone in our statewide groups uh, decided patterning it after the Tree City program, which has been around a long time. Uh, would be the appropriate thing, and therefore uh, we have the. They came up when the, when they actually got the group um, together, so the board for Bird uh, Wisconsin, Bird City, Wisconsin. Um, they came up with 22 criteria in five different categories that uh, cities have to meet in order to qualify for the program, and Wisconsin has come has met more than the required. In fact, last year we. Um, bounced ourselves on up to the level that's called high flyer, which means we're doing um, more than um, the basic requirements, the uh, high flyer achievements. And I didn't even know what some of those were until I was looking at last year's application. Um, the work that's been done in the city that has to do with invasive, removing invasive species, and I think the Sustainability Committee has been involved with some of those plans and and some of that, at least. It wasn't the bird people per <laughs> se that did it, so I think it was you guys. Um, and the, the Master Gardeners perhaps as well. Then uh, getting scouting groups and other uh, rep groups that have young people in it and getting them involved in like bluebird trails or building birdhouses or um, planting native plants in appropriate places and stuff like that for the young people. That was another one of it they, that made us in the high flyer category. The um, American Kestrel program that we're trying to help with, although we're not having much success at getting kestrels into our boxes, we are putting boxes up. Just have to talk to the birds a little bit. <laughs> and then the Chimney Swift project that Audubon has been particularly working on. Um, he, that's another statewide or nationwide project, really, but there's a state group and, and then um, the local group. And there will be the leader of the state group will be coming to uh, give a presentation sponsored by Audubon in late July. 
so to in timing it so it'll be a little bit before the a watch to see what chimneys the swifts are using uh, in fall migration. And I didn't know this one at all, but I congratulate you. City, the city of Oshkosh's city hall is registered as a bird safe building. That's <laughs> terrific. I was looking at the windows particularly and you know those walls of glass that some buildings are those aren't bird safe. So this is, this is better. It may be an old building, but that's probably what makes it safer <laughs> for the birds. So that's very good as well. And of course, there's always room to add more things. Um, you can go online to the Bird City website and see what all the various possible categories and criteria are. And Oshkosh could work on some of those. Oh, the Falcon Cam at the university was another one of the things that put us in the high flyer category. And as far as I know, all those things are still happening. Correct. And therefore, we should more or less just be sending in something that says, we're doing it again. <laughs> um, you have to, of course, get the resolution passed we by the, yeah. the council. That's really the only thing new right now. <laughs> as far as the Bird Fest is concerned for this year, we have had one planning meeting so far. And it's not going to deviate too much from what it has in the past. Uh, we do plan to have um, the rehabber. She had a baby boy, by the way. Every mom and baby are healthy. Um, she, she's going to have the live birds there, and that is very popular. The, the kids just love it, and I think the adults do too, even though they may not want to admit it. Um, there'll be some activities at the zoo for children, like we've had every year. The big sit will be taking place, and lots of people like to come and participate in that and help spot birds. We're probably going to be doing a few more bird walks than we've done in the past. We did two of them last year during the festival, and those were the first time we'd done actual little bird walks around the park with anybody that wanted to go along. And uh, we got some pretty enthusiastic participants. We had about 10 on the first walk and I think six or eight on the second walk. Uh, also, Anita Carpenter, who is uh, um, part of the committee as well as a bird club and Audubon member, she's going to be doing some uh, walks uh, generated or starting in the park on the second Tuesday morning and the second Saturday mornings, I think, for March, April, and May. Just on her own. I mean, she's Excellent. the one that's generating them. But it's another outlet for people that want to do bird walks. And I think Janet from the Audubon is going to put some advertising in the newspaper about them. Super. It'll just be meet, meet Anita down at um, Pavilion or whatever they're called, one, whichever <laughs> one that one is, at uh, 8 o'clock. So it's not real early. Even if you like to sleep in a little bit, you can still get there. Speaking of early, can you talk a little bit about the Big Sit and explain what that is? Sure. That's a national program also. I don't even remember now where it was started, but a few years ago somebody, I suppose maybe somebody that wasn't so physically able to walk and hike and that sort of thing, said, well, you know, always do it. People, birders are always doing big days and see how many species they can see in a whole day. Well, let's have one where you don't use up a lot of gasoline and, and charge around. You have to stay within a 17-foot diameter circle. You can sit or stand or walk around in the circle. That part doesn't matter. But you have to stay within that. You can use scopes, um, and it can be as many people as can get in the circle. And you can come and go as long as, you know, somebody's there the, for the whole period. Um, so that's basically what it is, and a couple of the years we did competing circles, but I think we're only doing one circle this year. <laughs> and surprisingly enough, folks found it um, real fun and real interesting. And some of the people that show up, I think, maybe have never even looked through a scope before, a spotting scope, and so, you know, looking for birds that way is something new to them. And Anita ha has conducted that one in the past, and, and she's very energetic and enthusiastic. So that's part of what generates the enthusiasm, too, I think. Any other questions about the, the bird fest? It's the first Saturday in May. That's 
what we've adopted, I guess, as our um, standard time to do it, partly because that's the day the zoo opens in the park, and they always have, um, you know, some activities for children and stuff. So a good crowd shows up in the park on the, on the first Saturday in May. Even sometimes the weather is not so good, they still show up. <laughs> um, can you address the, can you say a little something about the meeting that's coming up? Um, on March, that's the meeting you mean, right? Mm -hmm. On March 21st and 2nd? Yeah, Friday the 21st and Saturday the 22nd. The statewide Wisconsin Bird Conservation Initiative and Bird City, Wisconsin, are doing a joint meeting at the Best Western Hotel down here in town. And one of the reasons they picked Oshkosh is because we've been such a, a very active bird city. But there'll be a lot of opportunities to hear from other bird cities, um, speakers on different bird-related subjects, so, and they're, they're enough that I think they're having um, two sessions at a time going simultaneously on Friday, I guess it is, that they're doing that. So it sounds like there's going to be, there, some of it has to do with plants, you know, uh, planting appropriately for birds and to uh, provide them with food and shelter and stuff and using native plants and that sort of thing. So if, if you or others you know are interested in the plant aspects, there is going to be presentations. And this is open to the public? Yes. Well, there's a fee for right. attending, but yes, it's open to anybody that's interested. And they're, they're hoping to get uh, representatives or, or people from a lot of cities that maybe aren't bird cities yet to come and find out how the ones that already are do things that'll encourage them to, you know, go back and say, well, we, we do some of this already. Why don't we apply for a bird city as well? And I believe the last figure I heard was 72 bird cities now in the state. So that's, that's pretty good. That's very good. Yep. And we're one of them. Yes, we were one of the, the uh, early ones. I think we were the second round of or maybe we were the first round of bird cities, but in the first year at, at any rate. This is our fourth year, I believe. No. Super. Anybody else have any questions for Patty? Um, maintaining our bird city status seems to involve a lot of different groups working together, but how do you guys all communicate with each other? Like, what's the powerhouse that makes this all happen? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just, just common Carrier interest pigeon. in birds. Okay. Um, so there's Audubon. And some of the people that are in Audubon and the Bird Club are the same people. I mean, right. they, they talk to each other a lot about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, but the folks that do the plant stuff, I mean, they do their own thing, wild ones and, and the master gardeners and so forth. It's, there isn't any overarching... Uh, Umbrella to bring them all together. They just sort of find each other when they have something they want to but work on. But they communicate on. among oh, each yeah. other. Oh yeah, yeah. The important thing. Yeah. To make this all come together. Well, most of them, because of the common interest in nature and plants and birds and all that, they're friends and they know each other and they do things together. So yeah, they they work together pretty well. Well, and we do tend to bring them all together at Bird Fest yeah. too, because they'll have displays for all the different groups and. And the DNR has been interested in it. They've offered, they, come, they have a representative on the Bird Fest Committee, and, and they also have some activities of their own going. Um, the school teachers have been quite interested in it. One of the activities that we did last year, well, t two years actually, was um, an art show from the school children to, focused on birds. Uh, some of them are very realistic and some of them you have to use your imagination but you know they're all the way from kindergarten through senior high school and it was quite a, a, a very prolific as well as very interesting show and the teachers in the system here were, were very enthusiastic about doing it so we would like to one of the um, areas of uh, categories is public education and we would like to increase that with uh, more ways to educate young people 
Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any um, particular teachers in mind who have approached you guys with interest in that? Because the Oshkosh Community Foundation grants for Celebrate Education are coming up in the next couple of weeks, and that might be a great opportunity for a teacher. It to would. Now, uh, as far as I know, there, no one has approached us. Do you know, Margie? Have you heard of any? I don't know of any individual teachers, no. I know the, the ones that at Sheldon, the school that has the Sheldon Nature Center near mm -hmm. it, they do a lot of outdoor stuff because they have that nature center right there. Right. And of course, the Audubon has sponsored Sullivan's Woods, which is all southwest of town, for a long time. And kids still do go out there and get tours of that area and um, try to learn about nature and birds that way. And some of the Audubon members um, lead tours out there. So... And North High School has a, so far, a woods that's still um, a birdie place if uh -huh. you want to go take your class out there and mm -hmm. do bird things. But I have not heard of any teacher that's approached anybody in Audubon or the bird club and asked. Sometimes a specific teacher will call a person like Anita or me or Janet or somebody that they know, knows about. Well, Anita, particularly for butterflies, she gets called a lot. Uh, and uh, sometimes I do for birds or Anita for birds and just come to the classroom and do a little presentation. But I think that's the individual teacher just mm -hmm. wanting some help. Another thing that BirdFest incorporates is the gallery walk because it is on the first Saturday yes. of the month. And last year we included Capture Wisconsin, which is a photography group and had artists or photographers from all over the state that had a wonderful display of bird photos too and they liked us and we liked them so I suspect that'll be a relationship that'll continue too so yeah we bring in all kinds of different people because you know yeah. birds there, were, are there are several others besides um, Becca besides Becca Weiss that does the rehab or have live birds and they've been in some of the stores for gallery walk as well which is another attraction. Um, it's a fun day. Be sure and put that on your calendars. Let's hope the weather is good. The weather will be perfect, just like today. I do want to thank the <laughs> Sustainability Committee because you were the ones that we used to as our intro to the uh, council to get the very first approval and, and made it work, made it become made Oshkosh become a bird city, uh, and we, we appreciate that. A lot of cities don't have a sustainability committee, and the people interested in doing this sort of bird city stuff have to find somebody else, to, or some other group, or a councilman that likes birds, or something, <laughs> to, to get it introduced and before the full council. So we do thank you for that from the very beginning. Thanks for recognizing us because, as you heard from when Steve was saying, sometimes it's hard for us to recognize our accomplishments because sustainability is so broad. So, Well, that's great, one of them. It's great to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good thing. And, you know, there will always be room for improving every city that's a bird city to make them more livable for the birds, the wild birds. So it's, it's, it's not a chore that will end. It will, it will go on and on. Thank you so much, Betty. And okay. you've done an awful lot for it, too, so we really appreciate it. And we appreciate you coming to our committee meetings and helping out that way, too. I do have a little flyer that I put together. If you want, it's not every reason why Oshkosh is a bird city, but it's uh, a bunch, about 10, I guess, that I could think of. I filled up a page, and I thought, well, that's enough. The people that come to BirdFest aren't going to read past one full page anyway. So uh, that's some of the things that written in written down that I mentioned and that have made us a bird city. We are trying to, I'm um, hoping rather to promote the Sustainability Advisory Board, why we exist and what the city is doing for sustainability um, through a, a table at the farmer's market. Would you be okay mm -hmm. with us sharing this with people there? Oh, yeah. And if you want to get your table together in time for that event on March 21st and 22nd, I'm sure you could have it there. Okay. But, um, Carl Schwartz, uh, that she's heard mentioned before, 
is the person to contact about that. If you go online to Wisconsin Bird City or Bird City Wisconsin website, um, I've got his. You'll have all the details about the meeting and his how to contact Carl will be on there. Right now he's out in Arizona. It's 78 degrees. Ooh. Oh, Looking I'm so sorry. But, <laughs> <laughs> but he'll be back by the end of the week, I think. That's an excellent thought. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we will be ready. Yeah. Yes. That'll, that'll be good because I'm sure they'll be delighted to have, you know, they want, to, want the place to be full of information for people of all sorts. And maybe it would even get other towns that don't have a sustainability committee interested in such an entity. Super. Anything else? Thank you very much Thank for you. your time. Thank you. You're more than welcome. We are always happy to talk birds. <laughs> <laughs> and you do it well. Um, okay, then we have Resolution 1302, Keeping Asian Carp Out of the Great Lakes. Um, we've all had this for a couple of months now to look over. Is there any feedback on it? Any questions? Any thoughts? <coughs> well, send that, forwarded that link to that article the past couple of weeks. There's been some... Movement. A lot of things flying on this uh, related to this new um, Corps of Engineers study that was done. But it appears that it's going to be inertia to death. You know, they're talking, what is it, $39 billion or something like that? That was a hefty figure to reroute all of the storm sewers and the sewers and everything else in the Chicago area to close off the Chicago shipping channel. Mm -hmm. So the alternative is to let the Asian carp into the Great Lakes system. Environment versus economy, always. How do we feel about our, the resolution? Um. I, I like the resolution. I don't think it's saying, you know, any one entity is going to take a specific action. The intention is for this, or the intention really is for this to be symbolic and say, let's work together where all communities that are going to be impacted, and let's just, if there is a solution, we're going to support that solution or work toward finding a way to have a solution that we can support. So I, I just like the symbolism of it. It's not asking anything really specific, but it's, I think it's very symbolic and something that's very pertinent to us. And somebody who goes to the website for this will see a dot on the map. That dot will give them a point of contact. And while the board itself is not going to be the one to act on it, there are a bunch of aquatic ecologists at the university who might be interested as it becomes a more pressing issue instead of, you know, being proactive and preventing it. I think it'll be really, I think it's an important thing to say there are people in Oshkosh who are aware of this and are concerned. So let us know. <laughs> let us know what you need from us. Well, and it's an awareness and education issue that we need to, to support, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, you know, if Lake Winnebago fishing is, is a big deal, and I think there will be more and more interest in that because it's, you know, if, if tourism is important and fishing is the main part of our tourism, we have to pay attention to this. Did you have thoughts on anything? <clears throat> um, I disagree that, um, you know, especially with us being, you know, the city on the water and, you know, us kind of touting that as um, who we are and what we care about, I think it's really important that, you know, if someone goes online and, and they look and we're not on it, you know, <laughs> that'd be... It wouldn't be good either. That would be embarrassing, so, yes. Right. <laughs> Do you feel that we can um, send this to the council as it is, Tom? Are you comfortable with supporting yeah, for us so. there? Yeah, yeah. It's... And I would entertain a motion to accept this resolution. So moved. Second. Any further discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Thank you. Okay, our next meeting, it will be Monday, February 3rd, which will be coming up very quickly because this one was <laughs> delayed. Um, hopefully it will be a beautiful day and at least a balmy 15 degrees out. And I would entertain a motion. To, oh, can Tom? we 
Is it possible to move the meetings to like five o'clock? Yes, we are planning on discussing that in our work session okay. actually. So I would entertain a motion just to adjourn to work session. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Second, third, and fourth. Got it. <laughs> we all agree. Great. Thank you.